Hey guys, Nick here again from Quick Tech, and today we're going to be reviewing the 4K D-Modal Sports Tech. Now under $60, anything that shoots 4K, I think is amazing. So we're going to test it out, put it through all the tests, test the audio quality, video quality, time lapse, you name it. So stick around. So the V-Modal Sports Cam ships in this nice blue box with a photo of an extreme cyclist riding downhill to what I can only assume is his imminent death off of a cliff. Now a quick spin to the back of the box shows the specs, and you can see right away that this apparently shoots in 4K at 25 frames per second, or 1080p at 60. You'll also see it's rocking an 8 megapixel sensor, but somehow shoots 16 megapixel photos, so you figure that one out. On the side of the box, you'll see various accessories that ship with the camera. Getting right into the unboxing, you'll see the action cam and all of its included mounts. This one is, actually I'm not sure what that one is. This is for your helmet. These are kind of extensions. And this is for uh, to mount on your bicycle like the guy on the cover. It also comes with a standard micro USB cable for charging and some 3M tape. The camera itself is shipped in this nice protective plastic, and an overhead shot shows you the amount of accessories that are included in the box, all for under $50. Also in the box is a letter of thanks from Mr. V Modal himself, as well as the user manual. So taking a quick look at the camera in your hand, you can see this thing is super small, and also lightweight. As I slowly peel off the plastic covering the lens, you can see that the camera shows a nice carbon fiber design as well. Combine the small form factor with the fact that this thing is waterproof with no case needed, and also has built-in Wi-Fi for your smartphones, I was anxious to get out and start testing it. Right away I wanted to test out the time-lapse feature, and here's a nice relaxing view of the clouds rolling in at Keyport, New Jersey. Not quite as relaxing is the commute from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn to Hazlitt, New Jersey, which actually on this day took an hour and 40 minutes, but you can see is compressed down to 10 seconds. I'll have more time-lapse samples in a minute, but I just wanted to give you a sense of what the camera looks like just filming regular video. This is all raw, unedited footage, nothing has been color corrected, and you can see it's actually quite sharp for 720p. Text is perfectly legible, even from far away, and you can even see the uh, occasional dragonfly float in and out of the picture. Here I am walking with the instruction manual, trying to learn a bit more about the camera, and you can see the picture is bouncing around a bit. There is no built-in video stabilization that I can find. However, the video footage is not too jumpy or jerky, and overall is quite sharp. You can almost see detail in the murky Jersey water, which we'll see a closer look at as I head down to the beach a bit later. But all in all, I was quite impressed. Here are a few more time lapses of varying seconds and capture times. And of course, a standard sunset time lapse clouds rolling in perfectly, the sun setting below the tree line. Beautiful. Well, this is the basic sound test, and as you can tell right away, the audio is horribly out of sync. Now, for some, that might be a deal breaker, but with basic video editing or audio editing software, you can easily have the audio back in sync with your video. This can be done by detaching the audio and just moving it a few milliseconds to the left or right. Now again, with a sports cam, you have to think about what kind of footage are you recording and what amazing audio quality are you expecting to capture. You know, if you're skydiving, it's just going to be a bunch of wind and probably some terrified screaming. Same thing underwater. So I think the fact that the sports cam from D-Modal actually captures audio is just an added benefit. So after that fireside chat, it was time to hop in the car and test the waterproof capability. Here I am driving to the beach GTA 5 style with a tripod on my lap, and I'll show you more professional dash cam footage after the beach test. Now I drive the camera to a nearby beach, and even with the murky waters of New Jersey's bay, the action cam was able to capture some crisp underwater video. Now I assure you, visibility underwater is definitely not something that New Jersey is known for. And it was right around this moment where I realized I probably stepped out a bit too far, especially given the recent headlines in the area. However, you can see the video quality is absolutely pristine, and again, this is without the hassle of having to carry around an extra waterproof case. Here I am trying to make my way underwater. I think I saw some squid ink earlier. I mean, that looks like a shark getting ready to attack me. So needless to say, I was anxious to get back closer to the shore, grab my emo converse, and 
Do some more testing a bit closer to where the ocean meets the land. So here we are about to dip the camera just a few inches into the ocean, and you can see right away the amazing clarity. I imagine if you're taking the sports cam to the Caribbean, Hawaii, or even Florida, you'll really be able to achieve some amazing results in ocean, whether you're just swimming around or snorkeling. You'll see even crispier underwater footage in a minute as I brought this V-Modal sports cam to a pool nearby. But for now, that was the end of my beach trip, so it was time to hop back in the car and head elsewhere. As I make my exit, you can kind of see the video stabilization issues, but again, definitely not a deal breaker. You can see from this footage that I shot that the camera makes for a great, cheap, dedicated dash cam. The captured footage is super crisp and you can read every street sign and license plate quite clearly, even at 720p. Here's a shot of my dash cam rig. I found attaching it to a portable Jackery battery pack ensured me that the unit would keep recording, even on those long trips. And speaking of long trips, I somehow find myself at a farm after driving for a bit. And while no doubt it's a bit eerie, the footage is actually quite nice. You can see the wide angle lens here bending the fence, and you're really getting a true 150 degree angle from this camera. Taking a look at the sky, there's not a chemtrail to be found. Here's some footage of a pig getting his munch on. He was kind of cute, although he didn't smell the best in 90 degree weather, I assure you. The menu system is pretty straightforward, and you'll find all the standard settings from setting video resolution to time-lapse settings, still photos, loop recording, and even white balance. And while it would have been nice to have a touch screen, at this price point, I don't really mind clicking a few buttons just to get to the settings that I need. One feature I should probably get into is the fact that this camera is indeed Wi-Fi capable. Downloading the Partner app, you'll be able to not only control the camera settings directly from your smartphone, but you're also able to view and download images and videos straight from the device onto your mobile phone, making it great for posting some epic wide-angle selfies on your Insta feed. And speaking of photos, I took a few shots at 16 megapixels to compare with an iPhone 6 taken at the exact same spot. And while the iPhone definitely has some better color saturation and might be a bit sharper, the v modals wide-angle lens is unmatched compared to the iPhone. Now, if you are going to be taking some still photos with this, I thought it'd be helpful to pixel peep together. You can see zooming in on my arm here, there are definitely a lot of artifacts. And it's not the standard noise that you're probably used to when super zooming into a 16 megapixel camera. It, the artifacts are actually kind of chunky. But again, unless you're super zooming and really pixel peeping just for the fun of it, I found that still photos look super crisp at normal zoom in levels. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I'm going to leave you with some more footage so you can further judge this product for yourself. All in all, I think this is a definite buy if you're looking to venture into the sports cam world, but don't necessarily have $350 in your pocket for the latest GoPro. You can see the underwater footage you're able to capture with the device can easily be mistaken for commercial grade footage seen on TV today. Advertising prescription medication for only God knows what. Let's see if we can get my dad 30 likes on this video for being such a good sport and helping me out capturing this footage. He's actually the only person I know who can also swim, so that was a plus. Here's the camera fully submerged and looking right back up at me. All in all, this camera was a lot of fun, and I'll leave a product link in the description below. It's definitely worth checking out. I'm also going to be uploading some full dedicated footage I shot in 4K and 1080p with this device, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Again, if you like this video, definitely smash that like button as it helps the channel, and as always, this has been Nick from Quick Tech. I'm going to leave you with uh, the rest of this footage that I shot during the month of July, and hopefully it gives you some cool ideas on what you can do with the camera, whether it's strapping it to a guitar, or taking it to the aquarium, or just enjoying a peaceful sunset. If you have any questions about the camera or its settings or how to use the Wi-Fi, just drop me a comment down below and I'll hit you back, no worries. This has been Nick from Quick Tech. Enjoy the rest of the video and we'll see you in the next one.